those that are familiar with the Lotus brand will recall iconic badges like Elan, Esprit, Elise and Exige. All products praised for their handling and their steering. And this is something that this car that I'm driving right now, the Emira, is trying to mimic according to Lotus. And it's a very important product for the brand. It's the first all new product they've launched in a decade. And also, quite sadly, it's the final time Lotus will produce a car with an internal combustion engine and a manual gearbox. So what are the headline figures? Well, we've got a three and a half liter supercharged V6 petrol engine that has its roots in a Toyota engine, got a six speed manual gearbox that sends 300 kilowatts and 420 newton meters of torque to the rear wheels. There's a limited slip differential at the rear and our curb weight is just over 1,400 kilograms. So pretty much the perfect sports car recipe. But we can speak figures all day long. The proof, as they say, is in the pudding. What is the Emira like to drive? Well, initial thoughts, they've nailed the two key attributes of a Lotus, which is of course the steering feel and the handling. Handling is beautifully balanced. It's very difficult to get the rear end of this car to unstick itself and we get to steering. Well, the real highlight is the fact that this car has got a hydraulic setup instead of an electronic power steering system, which means that it is just brimming with feel. There's three driving modes here which adjusts the throttle response and the steering and the way that the car behaves in general. It's namely track which we're in at the moment which is the most aggressive setup which slacks off the electronic stability control. You then get a sports setup which I've just flicked to and then you get a tour mode which is the most civilized mode that they have for the car. But since I have the car for just one afternoon we're going to leave it in track see what this thing's got. What do I think of the engine? Well, look, this three and a half liter V6 is not the most characterful engine, especially when we look at the exterior of this car, I mean, for the two and a half million rand asking price, you are quite literally getting supermodel looks. You're getting Aston Martin, Lamborghini, McLaren, Ferrari-esque looks for a third of the price. But when you look at the powertrain, you've got something more akin to a Porsche Cayman. So you've got supermodel looks, but you don't have supercar performance. You also don't have supercar pricing. So where does that really leave the Amira? Is this better than a Porsche Cayman? What about interior quality? Well, I haven't driven a Lotus before, but I have been driven in a few Lotus models before. And well, the interior looked like it was built by some guy in a shed. This I can say is comfortably the best Lotus interior ever. We've got a fully digitized instrument cluster. We've got an infotainment system, which has its roots in Volvo slash Geely, um, which is obviously the, the holding company of, um, Lotus. So we've got a lot of Volvo bits inside here, which is not a bad thing at all. Some of the switch gears taken from Volvo, but then some of the things are bespoke. Like when you go into the infotainment system, the little, there's a little man with a helmet on uh, for the climate control and the button for climate control. The little man here has also got a helmet on. It's actually very cute. We've got a bespoke gear knob here, uh, Lotus steering wheel, which is one of the nicest steering wheels I've experienced. We've got Lotus seats that they've designed in-house, but then there's a lot of Volvo-esque switch gear, which is quite nice. We've also got a sound system from a brand called Kef, and it's the first time they've done an automotive sound system. Apparently, they're going to be doing the premium sound systems for all of the Lotus models going forward, which brings me neatly to my next point. Since this is the last internal combustion powered Lotus, that means 
future Lotus models will all be electric. We're gonna have a Lotus supercar that's electric and a couple of SUVs as well, which is a dramatic departure from what Colin Chapman had envisioned for his company, which has always made very small, very fun to drive sporty cars. But is that a mistake by Lotus? I mean, this is just... <laughs> it's just so... The steering is just so telepathic. The chassis is so balanced. I have so much confidence in the front end of this car going through these fast sweeps. It is just incredible. Leave it in fourth. You get that lovely supercharger whine. I mean, might not be as characterful as a Lambo or a, any of the other supercars, but for a V6, it sounds pretty good. What is the performance like? Well, it's not the fastest car on the planet, but it's fast enough. It's keeping me on my toes. <laughs> I love a supercharger. I just cannot believe how much feedback you're getting through the steering. It's like a dream. It's like the steering I've always wanted on a car. Honestly, better steering than a Cayman. Better handling than a Cayman, dare I say it. Just, what about the gearbox? Well, it's not the greatest gear change. Um, it's quite notchy and, and relatively industrial in the way it feels, but you definitely are aware that you're a part of the driving process in this car. Because the steering is so alive and the chassis is so communicative and the gear shift is sort of industrial grade, you really feel like you're a part of the experience in this car. It's really, as it says on the key, one for the drivers. Very, very special sports car by Lotus. The thing that has impressed me, right? So the handling and the steering is great on the road, but something that I think might go overlooked by many who drive this car or review this car is how comfortable it is, regardless of the prevailing tarmac conditions. It's just, we just went through, I went through a sweep now, which was just filled with bumps and, and recently repaired potholes and things. And in other cars I've driven up this road, some of which are performance SUVs, this rides better. And it's not doing so with any fancy electronic dampers. It's just really well calibrated. You can tell the people that set this car up, like the people that build the GT cars for Porsche and develop them, they just really like cars. And when you drive a product that's been fettled with by them, well, as a car guy, you just want to smile and drive it all day. Whoa. If you're one of those guys that likes to heel and toe, this is a very compact pedal box. So the heel and toe can be negotiated. There you go. <laughs> I love me a heel and toe. This is what driving is all about. This is what you watch all those YouTube movies or YouTube videos and that and you see them just grinning from ear to ear after a nice drive. You, this is what, this is why I love cars. Days like today. Ah, oh, this has been a bit of a workout. <laughs> Search Auto Trader.